Hello ladies and gentlemen, Willie here. At the end of my Was It Any Good Though series, I came to a conclusion, a conclusion that I suspected would be the case, but wouldn't have truly known until I'd looked at each class in the level of detail that I did. And that is that every class can be considered good, and while some are more favoured, there is really no class that is just straight up bad or useless. Each class has their own unique identity and iconic spells. Not everyone needs to have a CC, not everyone needs to have an interrupt or even a DPS cooldown, and while some classes can do things others cannot, it's often also the case vice versa. So in this new series I want to look at the ways you can make the most out of your chosen class and find out how to play to your class's strengths. The points I'll be looking at will differ from class to class in relation to their strengths, as they aren't all shared across the board. Today I'll be looking at the Shaman and we'll cover these points. The leveling choices, group play, raid healing, PvP and some macros and add-ons. So I asked you guys and you answered. Shaman's next, getting a lot of love for the hybrids early on in this series it seems. Shaman are the Horde exclusive class and can fill a number of roles in the game. To varying degrees of success let's say. Their capabilities in combat vary from kind of meh to pretty much mandatory. In fact, few classes in the game have such polarizing specializations and abilities, and oh boy do shamans have a lot of abilities to track and use. Putting all those different totems and shocks, including downranking, into action will really separate the peons from the true zogzogs. So what about this class can be used to your advantage and to make it strong? Shaman are one of the few classes that have a great deal of evolution through their leveling process and a bunch of different options are available to them. They are far less clear cut than many other classes are. Aside from picking up your totems, your talents mix and match a class that is divided between spellcasting and melee attacks, along with the occasional tanking talent thrown into the mix just to spice things up a bit. Generally speaking, you'll be starting off as Enhancement. This is due to the fact that many of the great elemental talents come after a number of levels. For some reason, Mr. Whoever it was that designed Shaman talents decided that the spell cast reduction talents for Lightning Bolt and Chain Lightning, your key damaging spells, should only be able to be capped out by level 39. So unless you like the idea of casting 3 second Lightning Bolts for over 35 levels, I would give it a miss early game. In fact, if you look at, well, just about any other class that has a spell cast reduction talent, it's right at the top of the talent tree. Why, Blizzard? Just, just why? Anyway, so you aren't going to be doing your Thunder God impression for some time, but that's not a problem as Enhancement is no slouch at levelling either. Between Earthbind kiting, heals and weapon buffs, they're pretty solid. The choice really comes around level 40. Now, by this point you've been basking in the glory that is Wind Fury weapon for a good 10 levels, and I wouldn't blame you if you kept on as Enhancement but at 40 you can really respec and then head over to the zappy boy side. Elemental Focus, Eye of the Storm, Elemental Fury, and of course Lightning Mastery can turn you into a melee swing and hope Wind Fury procs into a hard hitting caster. And if you do intend to make the swap, ensure you have gear ready to go. The Shaman is notoriously mana inefficient, and well it's just something you have to live with. You can downrank shocks to try and proc elemental focus though. This can help out, especially since you're probably going to be wearing a lovely pretty dress now that you're a caster. You don't want those mean enemies getting it dirty, do you? I'd like to level my own shaman up at some point. I really do enjoy the playstyle leveling and would love to give elemental a proper go as well. So you do pretty well by yourself in the open world as a master of the elements, but guess what? You'll be just as effective in groups too. Shaman have totally unique and irreplaceable utility and bring Warriors of the Horde the fierce power of Wind Fury Totem amongst other buffs. It's worth a mention as it's so meta at the moment for Horde melee dungeon cleave group, you'll pretty much always want a shaman in there. The Wind Fury procs on your party will give additional chance for Ravagers to proc, leading to more spinny action. Strength of Earth, off heals and a resurrect, the list goes on really. I think dungeon cleaves can be fun for a little bit even if only to gear up. It can be worth a look into if you enjoy that kind of thing. Being part of a group is really where the shaman can shine. And the key reason are the totems, after all they give the same buffs for the shaman alone as they do for the rest of the party. They scale up super hard. If you take a step back and actually consider the stat buffs that you're handing out, it's insane, okay? Take rank 4 strength of earth totem, 61 strength baseline, we're going to add 15% from enhancing totems, so we'll call that 70 strength for each party member. That one little totem is equal to 350 strength in raw stats. 
that you can just pop down whenever you want. Grace of Air gives the same for agility. A talented mana spring token gives 62.5 mana per fight, divided up between five people. It's just nuts when you think about it. And of course, let's all just stop to appreciate Wind Fury Totem 2. When you hear Shaman, I think this is the most iconic thing about them personally. Extra attacks can mean a lot more than just do a bit more damage. It gives more chances for procs to occur like Annihilator, Nightfall or Ravager. For sword spec warriors or rogues, it can start some proc chains off items like Thrashblade, Sword Specialization itself or Hand of Justice. Wind Fury doesn't proc from itself anymore unfortunately, it used to at one point and if you got lucky you could delete someone from existence. You still can with enough gear and luck. It's still very much a thing. Anyone else thinking of the name Unbreakable right about now? The thing is, totems are very much balanced around them being able to affect 5 people, meaning they are okay-ish by yourself, costing just enough mana, about to be usable, but then you get 4 friends and you are actually providing an insane amount of buffs. Extending beyond just totem buffs that any shaman can do in a group, the shaman's one of the most essential classes to any horde raid, specifically the restoration specialisation. Enhancement struggles due to a long list of reasons to be honest, and you can check out my was it any good though video on the shaman for more details on that. Elemental is decent enough in a short fight, it runs out of mana very quickly. Restoration however is pretty amazing. Not only do they pump out solid heals, especially group heals which are very much a rarity in classic, through chain heal, they can talent into different totems to boost others in the group, like the massive mana regen buff from the mana tide totem. The ancestral healing talent is great and pushes up your tank's survivability a nice notch on crits, all whilst providing the other buffs that they usually do. You'll normally have shaman specced into certain totems in certain groups and have it pre-coordinated so you can get the most out of the benefits that they offer. The healing side really comes to life in a large scale environment like raiding. The shaman is very much more than a totem machine in PvP. This is where they can put their full toolkit to use, and in PvP they aren't held back so much by mana, by hit gear, or by debuff slots like they are in raids when trying to DPS. Here they can reach their full potential. Okay, first thing first, it's going to have to be mentioned Enhancement in PvP. I mentioned the name Unbreakable before, if you haven't seen these vids go watch them, they're really some classics. And they're a bit of a dream too I think. Sure there will be people that reach that point again in classic, but to be doing that stuff you need insane gear, luck and to be able to casually walk up to cloth wearers and bash them on the head. It's fun to look at but I wish you luck actually getting to that point if that's what you want. People are definitely a lot more wise on how to play and play against other classes in PvP nowadays too. Restoration is solid in PvP once again, lacks the instant heals we can see with some other classes, we can't really rely solely on nature's swiftness when it's on a 3 minute cooldown, purge and totems are great as always of course. The key element of shamans I want to look at in PvP is elemental. Elemental is actually mental. Let's talk about what makes them great. Totems, obviously. Off heals, durable with male armor and a shield. High burst damage. Thanks to spell travel time, you can cast a lightning bolt into chain lightning frost shock and have all three spells slap at the same time. Get some crits in there and you can actually delete someone from around 20 yards away. Pretty cool. The PvP trinket for shamans can dispel stuns, roots, and slows. Elemental has pretty solid matchups against just about everything in a 1v1. While some can be a bit difficult, you need to play around your mana pool and play to win, not to survive in some cases. Versus a druid, you should be the aggressor. Get in their face, keep them in range, ground or earth shock entangling roots, and keep their heal over time and innovate purged. You can even purge nature's swiftness if you have perfect timing. Paladins are quite similar. They're very strong defensively and vulnerable to being kited in between freedom casts. Also, grounding totem and a purge are actually super annoying to deal with due to paladins having limited options for getting rid of grounding and their seals being purged. Also just attacking totems as well is an issue for paladins as they usually have slow weapons on and they can't just ignore them. It should be a simple enough matchup to win. Also take care when you crit them a lot as you're going to be giving them reckoning stacks most likely. Against hunter, as with any other class, you need to stay in their face via frost shock. The only real danger is when they scatter trap into a reset at max range, it'll be a pain to get back in range for you. Keep a poison cleansing totem up or dispel viper sting. You can ground freezing trap if you manage to time it right, but a decent hunter should be able to destroy it with their pet, even if you drop it just as they scatter. As for other ranged matchup, mages are a pain simply because they can reset the fight so easily. Shamans have the toolkit to win by removing ice barrier and their other buffs, as well as having grounding and earth shock to negate or remove damage. You should trinket frost nova most likely to avoid shatter combos. Grounding or duking counterspell matters a lot, as getting locked on nature will stop your lightning spells, 
and your heals. Ideally, you need to burst them out, but then they also have Ice Block, and popping Elemental Mastery can be a pretty easy tell that you're trying to do damage. As with pretty much everyone, mages are a tough uphill fight. Once again, you have the tools to beat Warlocks, but you need to play aggressively before their dots wear you down. Also, it depends what pet they have out. If they're using a Void Walker, it's kind of a free win, since if they use it to attack you, it's basically free eye of the Storm procs and if they sacrifice it, you can just purge the buff off. Keep Tremor Totem up for a Seduce from Succubus or Fear, since you can't trinket those effects. Bell Hunter is the only one that can cause problems since it brings Spell Lock. The real threat here is Death Coil into a full Fear and getting bursted out. As for Priest Purges, pretty nuts once again. Earth Shot their cast, keep them at a distance, or Tremor a Psychic Scream when they're trying to get close. If the Priest is full Shadow, they will go as aggro as possible, as hopping in and out of Shadow form to heal just costs too much mana to do. Just try not to drop in the duration of the silence they use. Against another shaman, it'll likely come down to a shock off between the two. Make sure to use down ranked lightning bolts on grounding totem, as you don't want to waste your shock cooldown on that. If they are enhanced, hope Wind Fury doesn't RNG stack you out. The final two matchups now, Warriors first. Honestly, this should be fairly easy, but melee leeway will make it not easy. Keep Tremor up to avoid intimidating shout resets, and try and save Trinket for Intercept, and then Hamstring as you can remove both with the Trinket and start a kite up with Frost Shock. You need to aim to burst them down fairly quickly, as they'll have the Mortal Strike debuff running on you at all time, making your heals pretty worthless. Finally, Rogues. This one can be tough, but it's doable. If you have decent gear you should be fine in the opener it's getting away from them that is the issue especially if they're able to reset keep poison cleansing totem up once again to get rid of crippling poison and blind earthbind and frost shock to kite you should consider flame shock so that vanish isn't a free reset but if you start a kite, they'll probably use Vanish just to get back on you again. It's a case of wearing them down via shocks and totems before they are able to connect and go through all their cooldowns. Now onto a few macros, not too many to mention here. I'd recommend a stop casting macro so you can instantly interrupt with Earthshock. It's a good idea to have this linked to a downranked version of Earthshock too, as quite often you're just using it for the interrupt effect. The macro for Ghost Wolf along the same line can be used. Saves you a small noise of having to stand before casting it after eating. It's one of those little quality of life things I enjoy. You'll be rebuffed buffing your lightning shield and weapon enchant many, many, many times throughout your life as a shaman, so the following macro can save you some of those much needed keybinds and bar space by combining the two spell effects together. The reset equals 3 means that the sequence will reset every 3 seconds after the first cast, so you'll be doing the enchant every 5 minutes and lightning shield much more frequently than that, and you can swap around the spell enchant reset timer as you prefer here. I also like mouse over macros on the shaman for purges, interrupts, off heals, saves you having to tab about between targets or click on screen. I'll link a few examples below. And with all these macros, you can find them in the video description. As for add-ons, I'd recommend a swing timer once again. Even if you want to go elemental at a later date, you're most likely going to be bashing things on the head for a while, so it can be good to kite your enemies between swings with Earthbind if you have a slow weapon, so you're always trading one for one hit. Also, if you need to heal, casting will reset your swing timer, so doing a swing into a heal can really add up in a fight. It also looks kind of cool as well. I'd recommend weapon swing timer for this. I would also get an add-on that displays the aura of your lightning shield and weapon enchant a little bit better than the default UI. There are plenty of choices to do this. I'd go for weak auras and create a little spell group that displays these spells as you want to be sure that they are active. You can easily lose your enchant and then just think, wow, I'm sure getting unlucky with Wind Fury procs, only to look up to that top right corner and see the buff hasn't been there for ages. I'd also get classic cast bars too. I'd recommend this for everyone, every single class, but especially playing a shaman, we have multiple options to counterplay spells from Grounding Totem and Earthshock. The info it gives you is super valuable and can really make a great difference. So that covers all I wanted to say for the shaman. Quite a versatile class and about as close as we get in World of Warcraft to something you can call a pure support class. And maybe the Alliance counterpart, the Paladin, may have claimed that title. We shall have to see when I cover that class, won't we? I like that each of the specialisations has their time in the spotlight for the Shaman too, be it levelling for enhancement, restoration for raids, and elemental for PvP. Really cool class overall, big fan of the Shaman. Let me know what you think, and tell me what class you want to see next in the comments. If you like what you see, give the video a like and subscribe, as there's plenty more to come. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Take care. Bye.